Even in the best of economic times, woodworking is still an expensive hobby. And when prices start going up, the cost of lumber and sheet goods might make you hesitate to even build some larger projects. But if you choose wisely, you can still make big projects without breaking the bank or cutting corners on quality. Here in the U.S. right now, we're facing some inflationary times. So when I set out to design and build the Shaker-inspired cabinet for our February 2023 issue of Woodworker's Journal, I chose my building materials with affordability in mind. I went with Shaker styling here for a couple of reasons. For one, it never goes out of fashion, and it also fits with almost any decor. Shaker lends itself really well to utility furniture like this cabinet, and it's relatively easy to build. Shaker furniture is also often painted, and that finishing option made my choice of economical building materials super easy. This cabinet is a mix of hardwood and sheet goods. For the legs, rails and stretchers, door frames and side frames, I chose yellow poplar. It's widely available from lumber dealers and even most home centers, and it's less expensive than any other domestic hardwood species. Poplar cuts, routes, and planes with very little effort. It takes joinery easily and holds fasteners well. It's lightweight, yet fairly dimensionally stable, and it bonds together with any glue. And on top of those other good attributes, here's why poplar is an excellent choice for painting. It's a closed-grained hardwood, so the end grain really doesn't have an open pore structure. It pretty much looks like the face or edge grain. And the grain overall is pretty nondescript and smooth. So all of its surfaces produce a smooth, painted finish without the grain pattern telegraphing through. Now as I said, my cabinet has sheet goods in it as well. The panels of the doors and these side frames are good old quarter inch MDF. When it comes to sheet goods, MDF is about as affordable as it gets, but it has a couple of other advantages too. For one, the panel groove created by most style cutters, like this, is a quarter inch wide. And a quarter inch MDF is a true quarter inch thick. So it fits these grooves nicely with just the right amount of gap. The faces of MDF are non-porous and perfectly smooth, so they take paint so well you'd think you were painting metal. I've got some plywood in here too. Both the bottom and back panels are three-quarter inch plywood. I settled on three-quarter inch cabinet grade birch plywood. Now you can find it at any plywood dealer and at some home centers. It tends to be the least expensive hardwood plywood on the market and it has smooth faces that take paint well. Now I could have used three-quarter inch MDF here, but three-quarter inch MDF is really heavy. And since small cabinets tend to get moved around a lot, I didn't want the extra weight. I routed V-grooves into the back panel to give it a faux slatted wood appearance and to add some visual appeal. I was a little concerned that the birch plywood might not pull off that effect very well, but it displays those V-groove details nicely and I like how it turned out. Now I decided to splurge on some cherry for the top panel and shelves because I think it dresses up this pale green milk paint and complements it well. But if you wanted to save even more money here, these easily could have been more painted yellow poplar. All in all, I think poplar, MDF, and birch plywood were the right choices for this cabinet project. They really brought the sticker price down, and as you can see, they worked beautifully with paint. So the next time you're thinking about a painted project, keep these material options in mind. You can find the complete plans for building this Shaker-inspired cabinet in the February 2023 issue of Woodworker's Journal Magazine. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworker's Journal Magazine and Rockler, and thanks for watching.